And the curl theorem is that if you are taking the curl of a physical quantity A, it is dot dA. Now, this is the flux of the curl of V, right? The curl of V flux is calculated here. So this will be equal to the closed loop integral and this is a path integral and this will be equal if you take the line integral or the path integral of the quantity. <coughs> a physical quantity is curling. So in order to find out how much it is curling, you can go on the boundary of it and they can give you the same amount. So, these are the two fundamental theorems, the divergence theorem, the divergence theorem, and the curl theorem, or we call the Stokes theorem as well, curl theorem. Right? So now, we are having the equation of electric field. Why not to find the divergence of this field, then how much this field is diverging. So, we will say that if I write E close path integral E dot dA, what will be this thing? As I said to earlier, any physical quantity it is having a dot product with area, then it is the flux of the quantity. So this I define is the electric flux. And this is equal to E dot dA. Now why not to find out, this is a surface integral, so why not to find out this flux. And to find out this flux, I will really have to uh, write this thing is here. Our equation of electric field is in R, and this is spherical charge, so its distribution of the field is also spherical. So I will apply spherical polar coordinates, and the spherical polar coordinates will give me some result. So let's see, write the reading here that. This is a closed surface integral and E is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and Q by R square in our unit vector dot. Now, what is dA? In spherical polar coordinates, you know what is dA? dA is equal to R square sine theta day theta d divided by. And this is also in R unit vector. When it is a volume element, then there will be dr as well. R will also change. R square dr sine theta d theta m d phi. So do calculate this one, and this will come out to be R unit vector when dot product with R unit vector, it will give you one. one. Similarly, R square will cancel with this one. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is constant. So it is coming out here. Charge is also constant. It will also come out here. So you are having closed surface integral and then sine theta, d theta, and d phi. And you know what this thing is. This is solid angle. And this solid angle. 2 by this will give and 2 this will give when we integrate it from 0 to pi zero to and pi. 0 to pi by 2. 0 to 2 pi. Two pi. 5 to pi and 0 to 2 pi. Two pi. Means one, once we will make d and then take d we will move by 2 pi. So this is this is called solid angle which we denote by this. And this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, q over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then this is 4 pi. And this is equal to q over 
of seven naught. So we have that the electric flux is equal to closed surface integral E dot dA and this is equal to Q over <coughs> Similarly, this we calculated for a single charge. This is single charge because this was the electric field of a single charge. Now, if we have more charges like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I can write that the electric field will be equal to summation on I. I. All the electric fields will be summed up. So, like E1 will be associated with Q1 charge, E2 with Q2, E3 with Q3, and so on. So, I will say that <coughs> for main charges, this Q will go to capital Q and close. How much charge? we have it closed because on this side we are giving a closed surface integral and closed surface means that we will enclose all the charges and this is equal to phi e and this is e dot dA now this electric field is the total electric field and this is equal to Q enclose over so, if I remove this one, the prime E from it, then this law, this equation, I call Gaussian sum. So this is the first equation of Maxwell. Gaussian. That this is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. E dot D, Q enclosed by epsilon naught. The first equation of Maxwell, and we call it Gauss's law. Gauss was the first person who derived this thing. Now, this is the integral form of it. Integral form means you are summing up the things. And there is a differential form as well, in which you are differentiating the things. So, we will apply the divergence theorem, this one, on this. So, here we are having E dot dA. If I write E here, then dot dA here. So, we are having divergence of E because for B I will have to write E and delta is actually the integral of this thing is equal to this. So I can write that by using the divergence theorem this one I can write is the divergence of E in a given volume <coughs> and this will be a volume integral. Divergence of E. It is equal to this side. And if I come here, then I will write 1 over epsilon naught and then Q enclosed. So Q, all the charges that I would have enclosed will be enclosed in a certain volume. So I can write that. If rho is the volume charge density, then rho times volume will give you the total charge. So I can write this Q enclosed is integral on a volume in rho d tau. Right? This is rho d tau. Now here in this equation, we see that it is the same volume which is here and which is here. They are in the same volume. 
So the volume can cancel with it. The charge density is constant. So it will come out and the volume, this one and this one are the same. They are inside the same volume. So I can write that the divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon. And this I call the differential form of velocity. So the very first thing we defined from charge, it should have electric field. Whether the electric field will diverge, so we say yes, it will diverge. How much will be the divergence of it? This much will be the divergence of it. The divergence will be proportional to the amount of charge, to the volume charge density. And it will be inversely proportional to the medium. Because the same charges you put in any other medium. Here the medium is a free space, is a vacuum. So if you place the charges in a different medium, then it will affect the divergence of it. So divergence of a quantity will actually give you a number and on the other side it will be proportional how many charges you are having there. So it is the differential form of Gauss's law. Now there are so many applications of Gauss's law. You would have gone to them, and I will now uh, move to something else that we found the divergence of it. What about the third <coughs> of it? Electric field here is diverging. Diverging means it is going out. And the divergence lines are exactly the same. This is the electric field which is diverging out of it. So these lines will never cross these lines. They will go to infinity in their direction. When they will not be twisting, when they will not be curling. So we say the curl of electric field will be zero. If the electric field is diverging, it will never ever curl. Right? Because we are in the regime of electrostatic, this charge is not moving, this charge is stationary. So in that situation, we will say that F divergence of electric field is non-zero. Means it is diverging. Then it means this implies that the curve of electric field will be must be zero. Not will be, but must be zero. Because this electric field lines will never turn. And this is one of the form of electric field. Such field you call, there is a very special thing. When the curve of a vector quantity is zero, you call that conservative field. Right? That field is called conservative. And there are some properties associated with that field. When a field is conservative, then yes. Then the work done in that field will be independent of the path followed. It will only depend on the end paths. Like from A to B, you have moved a charged particle, then the path will not matter. It doesn't matter. Only the end points are responsible for this. So, this is the property of uh, conservative field. Now you see, if the curl of electric field is zero, 
then this electric field lines are going in a straight line, they are not turning. So what you think that if this is electric field is the result of something, then the thing will be going in a straight line, it will not curl, it will not twist. Right? So it gives you the idea of potential which you call electric potential. Right? Now let me write the fundamental theorem of gradient. What was the fundamental theorem of gradient? Is the fundamental theorem of divergence, the fundamental theorem of curve. So there the first was the fundamental theorem of gradient. And what was it? <coughs> it was that Vb means the potential at B minus the potential at A is actually equal 